Who we are then? Back for some more Aston Martin Road to Glory, and here we are, the home race at Silverstone. And as you can see in the background, we have a little something special. Now, before we jump into this, check out the last episode, guys. Link in the top right for the Canadian Grand Prix. Spoilers ahead. But anyway, 3, 2, 1, and let's reveal the car livery for this weekend's race. So, I've essentially inverted the livery for this one. I will admit it's not 100% perfect. Some things I'm not a big fan of, but I'm kind of limited by the car in certain areas and what can be possible. But the main you know, basis of the livery is running a fluorescent yellow car for a change with some green highlights and then of course changing the sponsors to black so that they contrast off the car paint quite nicely. And yeah, the only downside is that on the black parts of the car, the sponsors aren't really that visible. So I kind of tried to put a white outline around them, but yeah, it hasn't done the best, but it will do. And the car on track looks really, really nice, as you can see here in free practice. So yeah, we're going to jump into the weekend's action and get into practice straight away. Currently, we're on the race strategy program or the kind of race sims. And we went ahead and got a maximum perfect score, purple and that will do the job very nicely and we can now move into the weekend's kind of prep following on from that practice session which showed that we had great pace but also pretty aggressive tire wear now this weekend we're running the balanced allocation yet again as i want to make sure i'm strong and competitive in qualifying no rain forecast for the british grand prix which is quite nice so dry conditions throughout as we then look at confirmation of the last race we of course had that failure on the engine we got no extra R&D points which was a bit of a shame and confirmation it was the ICE that we lost so we're now on our third and final unit so it looks like at some point we are going to have to take a penalty later on in the season which isn't ideal but it is what it is nonetheless as you can see also we have well we had four upgrades planned but two of them have arrived two of them have failed now, with uh, repurchasing the upgrades that failed and you know a few more updates here and there, you can see we're actually still neck and neck with Williams and we're still technically bottom, the last and worst team, but the gap has closed to Haas and also Alfa Romeo, they bring some upgrades, Alfa Tari as well, and also Alpine. But generally, the tendency you can see where the grid is essentially closing up and the field spread is getting smaller is continuing. So things are getting more and more competitive on the grid. Now, we went ahead and repurchased those two failed upgrades along with adding two more which were major on the chassis and the aero so if this upgrade package arrives it should move us hopefully above Haas if all goes well and we have no more failures we've had a pretty miserable run lately of you know inconsistency and just having failures with upgrades so I kind of hope we can put that behind us and just bring upgrades consistently to every race and make sure they arrive without failure so yeah practice done we got a decent haul of points and we're ready to go as we jump into qualifying here for my home race the team's home race at silverstone looking to impress and have a strong weekend with the cars you can see in the background there in the garage looking very beautiful now here we are qualifying time on board with the fluorescent yellow aston martin and we're gonna get straight to work here and hopefully look to move into Q2 if we're lucky. The pace doesn't seem too bad around this track, to be honest. I was expecting it to be a lot worse, but to my surprise, we're actually relatively competitive. So through turns one and two, and now into three. Didn't quite get all the apex there, but we'll just about get away with it. Turn four, nicely done. On the power, a little bit hesitant to get the power down, and just taking a bit of a, a bit of a while there to really get on that traction. Sector 1 that draws to a close, we break at the 50 and now tip the nose into Brooklyn's which feeds into Luffield. Try to stay relatively tight, keep a little bit of throttle on to keep some minimum speed and that will also make your exit a bit better as you get the power down along the old pit complex and we now head down to the cop's corner. The 50 meter board is a reference to kind of essentially take a bit of a lift and turn in but we just get a bit of understeer and invalidate running wide. I went ahead though and still finished the lap just to kind of get a delta and to know where the pace really is. Across the line and it's a 127.7 which isn't too bad to be fair. Now then we're going to move on to the final attempt here in qualifying and we're going to get straight to it and waste no time as we hopefully look to get through on this second set of tyres. Bit of a moment 
as we got the lap underway, which is an idea, was we're already down because of it. Through turn one, I just have a bit of a drift. I lose the back end, shake of the head, as we're over a tenth down, I completely miss the apex through three, and we also lose the back end in between three and four. It's been a horrible first sector, but we now the exit, which I said before, um, wasn't that great out of turn four, so we're a tenth and a half down in sector one alone. Still technically up on the Tifi in P16 by just under a tenth, so this could still be a competitive lap if we pull it together. Out of Luffy, we get another good exit, and we're now just a tenth down on our previous attempt, making our way into Cops, where we invalidated it last time. Downshift. Didn't quite get enough of the apex, but we get a great exit and a lovely bit of drive to recover all the lost deficit as we now head into the S section. Maggots and Beckett's trying to nail it. We run a bit wide there, just turned in a bit too late. And we invalidate again in devastating fashion, which was really, really unfortunate. And yeah, just really annoying. You can see we're still you know, pushing on. I just want to see what the lap would have been so I can kind of remove doubt. From my mind and also we'll get an idea as to where we would have finished at the end of qualifying you can see we found you know lots of time in different lots of different areas but across the line we do essentially match with a 27-7 yet again but let's look at the final rundown as we start our home grand prix from last lance stroll in p19 and we seem to be a bit off the pace when it mattered because everyone ahead of us is within a second from p1 but we are a bit of a way back with that said I don't know if I could have challenged Mick, but if you kind of do some quick math, we was over two and a half tenths down alone at turn three, turn four before we got the power down and got a good exit. So I think on a perfect lap, we could have actually maybe even got through because the gaps are quite close between Mick, you know, Latifi, Ocon, Albon, Bottas. It was a pretty stacked lower end of the midfield. So I think on a perfect lap I could have made it, but instead we're starting last and that is far from ideal. Welcome to Great Britain and the Great Silverstone Circuit for today's Grand Prix. With good opportunities to overtake at the end of the Wellington and Hangar Straits, there's a lot of potential for close action around the 3.6 miles of Silverstone Circuit. With 18 corners and an average lap speed of around 145 miles per hour, it's also one of the longest and quickest circuits on the calendar. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. World champion Max Verstappen starts from pole position. Charles Leclerc alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Russell, Sir Lewis Hamilton, and Perez. Norris, Fernando Alonso, Ricardo, and Pierre Gasly. Sonoda, Magnussen, Valtteri Bottas, and Joe, Albert, Ocon. Nicholas Latifi and Mick Schumacher. Stroll and Martinez. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Anthony Davidson joins me once again in the commentary box, and it's fantastic to have you here with us today. But I'm curious, as a man with experience out on the track, how do you stop those pre-race nerves from becoming overwhelming when you're lining up on the grid? Well, I imagine they'll be starting to feel the adrenaline as they anticipate the rundown into Turn 1, a bit like preparing to go into battle. The unknown situation will bring nerves, but that's a good thing. It will keep them focused on the moment and on their surroundings as we build towards the start of the Grand Prix. Now then, time for the main event. We're here for the race, P20 and last place. And we've got Lance Stroll to our left in P19. So yeah, it's not looking great in terms of qualifying pace. However, that's on paper. We didn't actually set a lap time, but I do think there's actually a bit of pace. The key thing here is strategy and race IQ. So timing of overtakes and when to do them is gonna be very important because you want to try and break the DRS train at 
those times. When you make a move, you want to try and make sure it's definitive and you put away. And also you want to make sure you follow cars, safe battery at the right time, all that good stuff. So it's going to be very important how you structure the race in terms of strategy. We're going to leave our options open. The possibility of a medium to soft may happen, although I highly doubt it. And uh, yeah, we're going to start the medium. Hopefully it goes well. 0.2 extra fuel. I was thinking going a bit lower, but I'm not too confident. So we'll just leave it on 0.2 extra just to be safe. And yeah, we're going to get into it and try and turn this one around. Here we go then, let's get into it. Special livery as we get ready for the lights. Away we go. Not a terrible start to be fair, but others just getting a better launch, including our teammate. Into turn one, just gonna keep our distance. Stroll, oh my God, that was close. I was gonna go for the move there, but he just moved across. I'm gonna stick a nose up the inside of Schumacher's stroll and also Having a timid look at Latifi here. Might just be able to get that one done. As we go around the outside onto the Wellington straight. And that move is done. And this looks like some pretty decent straight line speed already. From what I can tell as we've got some pretty big battles up ahead. I'm going to try and have a little stab around the outside of Albon here. Oh my god, he just wiggles. I may have got wing damage. Luckily, we're still in one piece. Well, let's see if we can have a little look and try and maybe even clear our one and try to hold on to the top 15. But this has been an excellent start on home soil, getting the job done early on and making a nice bit of progress. A little train of cars ahead, though. Let's see what the straight line speed's saying. As we head onto the hangar straight, you can see, oh, yes, we've got loads of straight line speed actually pulling away. So, a bit of a a Jeddah situation here on our hands with the straight line speed, so that could be quite encouraging in terms of potentially giving us a decent race. I thought about it there, but wasn't really close enough for a move, and the AI will probably just turn in on me if I were to commit. Oh, car off, up ahead, and rejoins into Ocon. I think it was Magnussen. Dangerous rejoin. And now Joe putting him under pressure. But AI getting the elbows out and having a few little moments in this race so far. More battling ahead. Up the inside of Albon we go. Into three. AI behaving quite dangerously so far. I was just going to say that. An Albon costs us both a front wing end plate. Oh, God. That's so frustrating, man. Well, we're going to have to pit this lap. Albon's got damage as well. So this could be chaos. A new strategy available on the MFT. Got that confirmed. I should hopefully be able to get the hard tyres to the end. Hmm. Oops. Got a stupid warning there. Anyway, let's pit. Get the front wing changed. And basically just go or try and go to the end on the hard tyres. And see what happens. Obviously, ideally, we want a safety car now because <laughs> our pace isn't that great. And we're going to be a long way back with a wing change. So we need a, a small miracle in this race. We are racing up on though. We can have a good stop. Come on, boys. Deliver. Not great, but good enough that we get the jump. Although Albon is on soft tyres, so he'll probably automatically repass me almost instantly. But yeah, good, good work from the boys there in the pit stop, even though it wasn't an ideal one. It was good enough. Okay, one stop to go. Just one stop left in this strategy. I'd like to maybe try and keep up with Albon throughout this stint. That would be nice. That would be the ideal scenario. If I can hang on to him on a hard tyre, but... I'm not feeling too confident, especially not in this phase. Just have no grip. Let Albon go, let's try and see if we can try and keep up. Well, Albon's already buggered off, so... Yep, we're on our own. I'll try and see if I can keep him in my sights, at least. But I've used a big chunk of battery to try and keep up, and he still managed to drop me. Yellow flag. I think it's the race leader. One of the Red Bulls. I'm still trying to push, but I'm struggling on this time, man. 
It is one of the Red Bulls. Let's see if anything happens. We'll be our way back into this race. We're snapping out. Confirmation. Looks like no safety car though, which is a bit of a shame. I was really hoping for a way back in. Maybe we'll get another retirement in a bit. But the first one isn't lucky for us. It doesn't go our way. The gap is now leveled out between me and Albon, so he's no longer pulling away. I'm starting to pull him in now. So, tire advantage playing a part. We're also rapidly catching the cars ahead who are battling. So, I think we're making up the lost time, you know, for the pit stop. But let's see. A bit of engine wear as well. Control electronics over 60%, hence the engine wear icon. And there we go. I uh, went into the pit lane just when I thought, you know, tire wear was starting to level out between us and we were starting to get the upper hand. He pits, so I was correct. Personal best on that lap. That's kind of my pace right now. 30.8, I can't do it quicker than that. Right then, cars are starting to pit. Let's see if we're near anyone by the time we get to the pit straight. Okay, I think we'll jump Magnuson and Stroll. If we'll go as well. Definitely Stroll. Not too sure about these tyres getting to the end, but we'll see. Here we go. There's K Mag, so we're not going to jump him, but he'll be on cold tyres. And we'll get the benefit of the RS. Give him a moment there on the braking as I'm just waiting to get the DRS. Pretty sure he's gone for the move to be fair. Lost too much time in that entire sequence. But we're ahead of our teammate, so I'll take that. Now we'll see if our pace can hold up on a 35% worn hard tyre, which is a bit of a worry. And there we go. Magnuson just has no grip on that tyre. So we'll use whatever battery we have to try and pull him. Well, not pull him, hopefully drop him from us. More cars in the pit lane. Trying to break the RS with Magnuson, pretty close. Although he's... Again, quite a bit through there, through the final corner. So he'll probably stay in range. Actually, I may have just dropped him, in fairness. I may have just done enough. Either way, let's see if we can try and keep this pace up and get these tires to the end. Personal best. Not too shabby. We're going to go back to try not to use any battery and see if we can recharge a little bit. The pace is good, man. On a single lap, using the battery, I think we can probably catch up to Schumacher and Latifi, especially if Latifi stays in front. Schumacher battling with Latifi. I'm trying to push now with a little bit of battery to try and close the gap and then hopefully I can close up and then recharge behind them. They're still going side by side, so they're losing a chunk of time here. So this is really helping us out as we're going to set a new personal best. Let's go for one lap here where we just give it everything. They're still side by side so we can make this gap up. Personal best, let's go. Not quite close enough to get DRS for the hangar straight, but we should hopefully close up. Anyway, our battery now, so we've used up all the reserves and they're still going to keep battling. Second warning on the limit now, but we've got DRS finally on this straight. Also, tyre wear is a bit of a concern. I don't know if we're going to make it. I mean, I say that. I might just go to the end anyway and see if I can survive. Essentially, driving above 75. Let's get back up to racing speed. Come on. Try and drive above the 75% front left as Magnussen calls it quits. I think Magnussen's drove a damaged car system because they've had no pace. A safety car now would be great. That would get us out of all the trouble. We're not going to get one, unfortunately. I'm starting to struggle now to hold on to these two. Schumacher has decent pace. He's pulling the TFA along quite nicely. The Williams is pretty snappy on the straights, and I'm just not quite able to keep up. The front left is starting to give up now. Still going to try and commit to go to the end and stick with these guys, but it's not going to be easy. I'm also trying to recharge a little bit of battery, but it's proving so difficult. I need the battery to keep up. Engine wear also kicking in. Here we go then, we're officially in puncture territory. Anything above this is high risk. So we're in the unknown now. Let's just hope we can hold on. If we do get a puncture, I'll just retire the car. Because we're not going to get a safety car now, we'll be on the safety car window. So 
I'm completely out of battery now. I'm using everything I've got to try and keep up. I set a personal best on the last lap. A 30-0, but I think we've reached the end of our road now, guys. There we go, then. Let's bring the car home. Not a race to be proud of or happy about. Shame, because the pace, I think, was decent. But I guess we'll never know, thanks to Albon, of course, ruining our race. Somehow, I've held onto the tyres, and we're going to get to the end on near enough a 90% left front tyre and an 88 right front so absolutely insane but uh, yeah I'll take it we'd be our teammate he's our rival happy with that and uh, we've gone to the next one fingers crossed we have a better race next time out as we see the checkered flag here in a home Grand Prix and that's the end of the race we'll see you in part Fermi Plenty of action then here in Silverstone, a memorable race and an impressive victory. Tell me Ant, how did they manage to achieve this win? I think it was clear what the main contributing factor out on track was, speed. I know it sounds like an awfully reductive statement, but fast cars win races and we saw that today with our winner. Here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. So there we have it then guys, that was the race at Silverstone and it's a Ferrari 1-3, signs winning ahead of Hamilton who gets the fastest lap and Leclerc third. Russell P4 in a good old fashioned Mercedes v Ferrari battle, although Verstappen was dominating up until his DNF. Lando P5 ahead of Perez, great drive from him ahead of Alonso, Ricardo, Ocon and Gasly and then missing out the points, Sonoda, Bottas, Joe Schumacher, Latifi, myself, Albon, Stroll, Magnussen and DNF of course, or Verstappen sorry, DNFing of course as I get my words mixed up. In the standings, we, of course, still just with a single point to our name down in P17, not really much happening, and Sainz retakes the lead. In the Constructors, we're still ninth again, just ahead of Williams, we've got a point. That's the only difference right now, but we need to start getting some regular points finishes, man, if we want to try and make some real progress. Either way, guys, that is it for today's episode at Silverstone. Leave a like and subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps out the channel, and we're absolutely flying right now, so any support would be massively appreciated. Check out the two videos on screen in a moment. As always, a big plug and a shout out to the members for supporting the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care and let's goodbye from me.